Hello and welcome back to Pillars of Eternity. So I did some respecting and now we can open this door. I suppose it can't be helped. Yes. There you go. Please let's be the door. I mean. Whew. Guys, come on in. Oh, there you are. This frail old priest is hunched over a table surrounded by scattered scrolls and parchment, examining their contents with the aid of a thick monocle. He glances up as you approach, blinking roomy eyes. More visitors, then. You're not one of the acolytes, or the guards, for that matter. His voice is a dry, quiet rasp, which makes you an intruder at the least. Cost put you up to this, I suppose? Yes, that would be him, sending young women to dash themselves against the keep's defenses. He shakes his head. Who that my sermons could draw such fervor, still you are here. What is it you want? Hmm. How did you know I came here on behalf of Kolsk? Nedmar studies you quietly for a moment. My eyes may be failing me. But my wits have not. Kolsk has recruited that what allies he can, and he has begun to strike against the keep in earnest. It has not been long since his latest effort, as I predicted, and as you can see, the attempt was a disaster. Kolsk is unwilling to grasp certain truths. Nor does he understand what it is that keeps rhetoric in power. He will need much guidance if he means to take rhetoric's place. I can only hope he would listen. Good thing his predecessor set expectations low, then. You don't seem to think much of this Kolsk fellow. It is not that. I simply disagree with his methods. We have known each other for a long time. I remember him as a young lad. It makes it all the harder to see him act this way. Impulsively. Blindly. Nedmar frowns. He and his followers have brought more harm than good for all his good intentions. But I do not wish him harm. And so I find myself caught with their struggle for power. He raises a bony finger. But neither Kolsk nor Redrick can resolve this crisis. They are but mortal men. We must turn to Barath. It is the twined god who will bring peace and balance to the souls of Gilded Vale. And it is to Barav that we must pray if we are to see Wade when's legacy ended. Um, I'm here to face Redrick. Will you help me? Nedmar's brows knit together in an expression of mournful regret. I don't know that I can. I have tried to warn Kolsk and his people of the dangers. I have in truth tried often to sway them from their path. My efforts do not seem to have made any difference. Play nice with a fellow that wants to kill you and all your friends. <laughs> Can't imagine why they wouldn't listen to sound advice like that. Even poor Giacco. I thought he, at least, might be safe. But he's all serious now other for her experiments. He bows his head, setting his trembling hands upon the table for support. I have narrowly escaped suspicion. Redrick is in the grip of grief and will not be swayed. He will bring his wrath down upon those poor prisoners, he shakes his head, and I cannot shoulder that guilt. I cannot bear it. Tell me about Jaco. One of my acolytes. Niedmar's expression crumbles with guilt, grief. 
I found him begging in the street when he was but a young lad. I took him in. I hoped he might grow within the church, take my place when I grew too old to serve for Lord Redrick. A bitter note enters his voice, but he took an interest in Kolsk efforts. His vain rebellion, I could not keep him from leaving. And now he has joined Kolsk against our lord and lingers in the dungeons. I fear he may have already have fallen victim to Osiris' evil designs. What about her experiment? Osria, a bright young man corrupted by the teachings of the Animancers. She has filled Lord Redrick's head with blasphemous notions and false hope, preying upon his desire to guide his people. And he has been foolish enough to listen. Redrick has given Osria leave to conduct what experiments she will. Now the lowest reaches of the keep are fouled with the smell of rot. Who knows what souls dwell lamenting in the darkness. Animancers, his lips twist into a frown. Why am I not surprised or involved in this nonsense? I begged Lord Redrick's forgiveness on my acolyte's behalf, but I think I have only delayed Giacos' fate. He shakes his head. He is at Osiris mercy now. If I save Giacco, will you help me reach Redrick? I... I could give you the means to enter Redrick's chapel below. That would put you inside his throne room. Edmar's voice trembles, but I cannot risk it while Giacco is in danger. If you can see him safely out of Osiris' reach. I promise you, I will do my best to help you. He looks cautiously around the room. Oh, this will do you more good than disguise. We have a fast phrase. It is, from every ending a beginning. Say that and the guards here will leave you be. On this floor alone, I'm afraid. Redrick sells for a little patience for such things. I will do my best to avoid any further bloodshed. The old priest lets out a relieved breath, and you see the first small semblance of hope within his eyes. Be cautious. Austria wields powerful sorceries, and she has a fondness for cruel traps. I don't doubt she will be a terrible foe if angered. Nedmar claps his hands together. Gods guide you. Well, Austria, you're not gonna be happy about that, I'm afraid. Well, there's still that one room up here, but it requires tons of mechanics, as you can see, at least seven. So, yeah. I have four, I think. Yeah, I have four. But maybe now we can open the prison cell. It's a shame that we cannot seem to be able to close doors, but we can. Oh, that's great. And I'm also happy that once they have seen that there's a trap, they will avoid it. It's no trouble. Yep. Hope that helps. This young man's face is badly bruised and his gaunt form is covered in a threadbare shirt. He watches you, shivering, with a measure of hope in his eyes. I don't know who you are, but will you help me? Gods, what have people become in this place? He gazes nervously past you at the open cell door. Uh, I don't think I can fight my way out. You must be Giacco. Nedmar sent me here to find you. Nedmar? 
Driaco gives a quiet laugh of disbelief. The priests send you. I thought... Well, I thought he would leave me here to rot. He wasn't too happy when I left the keep. I told him I could do far more good with Kosk than an acolyte. He accused me of joining a bunch of old laws. <laughs> Jack looks down on his feet. I guess we were both, both wrong. What can you tell me about Nedmar? Nedmar's been a father to me, really. My actual father was a trader and he died in a bandit raid when I was young. I don't remember him much. I remember the days after, though. Stuck here in Gilded Vale, begging for food. Nedmar was a priest of the scattered god back then. He took me in and raised me in the church. I was going to follow in his footsteps, even after he converted and we turned to the twined god. But I started seeing what was happening to Gilded Vale, what Redrick was doing. And Nedmar, he just kept on saying that things would work out, that we had to stand by the Lord of the Keep. Kolsk was the only one who seemed to be willing to do anything about it instead of, well, preaching. He smiled sadly. So that's two fathers I've left behind. Hmm. I take it you ended up here after assaulting the keep with Kolsk and his men. Yes, he looks away. It seemed a good plan. We got it in without incident and I knew the way. But we were surprised in the dungeons and most of us. Giacos shudders. You have seen some of them. Fought them. Their bodies at least. Not their minds anymore. But their souls. The woman down here, Redrick's Animancer, her name is Osria. I've heard her speaking, sometimes talking about a cure. Lord Redrick calls on her often, but she's not curing anyone. She's only turned men and women into monsters, he shudders. I watched her take the others. I was sure I'd be next. Alof shakes his head. Men and women turn to this evil to cure Hollowborn. Madness. Tell me about her. There's something not right about her. A bad feeling, I mean. I knew the moment she arrived things would take a turn for the worse. He shivers. There is nothing good comes of dealing with animancers. Unnatural to a lot of them. She's the one who transformed them, changed my friends into monsters, said she was doing it for the good of Gilded Vale. Jacko clenches a fist. More like the good of her coin purse and her sick curiosity. She's dangerous. And who knows what else she's got in her laboratory. I wouldn't go in there. She she has a convincing manner. Spells, no doubt. Well, you're free, so make her run for it. Thank you, stranger. I have to get back to the fork. But first, some food and rest, I think. Tell Nedmar... Well... Tell him I still have the carving of the pale knight he gave me as a boy, and that I hope he is well. Good luck, and may the gods keep you safe. And now we're gonna make run for it. Hmm. Nothing there, no. Back to Nemer. And let's hope she won't get out of her laboratory. Because I do have a, the personality of a coward. And I'm a, a little dumb when it comes to dealing with stuff quietly, okay? Just to remind you, we have at least 10, I think, 10 sets of garments that we could use to disguise ourselves. You've returned. Have you found him? Are there any survivors? Giaco is safe. He asked me to tell you that he's kept the carving you gave him as a boy. Nedmar's eyes widen. With sudden vigor, he rushes forward to grasp the arm. Oh, thank the gods. Thank you. I did not think you could... That is, I, I feared... He shakes his head. I did not want him to meet the Pale Knight so soon. Nedmar pulls away, collecting himself. Here, <clears throat> what I promise you in return, he 
pulls a large iron key from the pocket of his robe and hands it to you. This will open a door in the scriptorium. He points west, and from there you can reach the chapel and Lord Redrick without encountering quite so many guards. Take this too. I have little wealth to offer. Better to give something of use. I would entreat you before you go. Despite his shortcomings, Lord Redrick follows the gods with obedience, and he has Gilded Bell's best interests in mind. It might be that, with time, he can achieve what he desires. Please, consider this before you turn to violence. I thought you'd favor Kolska's Lord of Redrick's hold. I favor him as he is, a man of vision, but Kolska has a hunger in him for rule, even if to good purpose. He is not led by his faith. Still, he is my friend, and I am willing to assist Kolsk in restoring divine favor to the lands of Gilded Vale. Should Lord Redrick fall, that is. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't think we need to rest. Of course, first things first, I want to check out your rooms. The rural communities loved Admef Hadrat, considering him the best leader they would ever had. In Adir, the Firconing rankled against the, his usurpations of imperial authority, but no longer had the necessary power to truly undo anything that had happened. Two years later, in 2664 AI, the Firconing found allies within to explore the ruins against the treaty conditions and plundered them for their artifacts. This was done discreetly at first, but they eventually became careless. The agents were discovered and arrested, but there was no evidence pointing back to the Forkoning. Admeth, suspecting the truth, used Glanfetan Brishvalgin, mine hunters, the progenitors of modern-day ciphers, to investigate the matter further. With this method of interrogation, he discovered a chain of evidence all the way back to the Firkoning. While he investigated, many rural communities suffered retaliatory attacks by Glanfatans. Armed with this new information, Adne forked with Galvan Medra, the new leader of the Glanfatans, and the rural communities of the Derud to prevent the Firkoning's agents from entering the ruins. There was a back and forth between the two groups, both sides engaging in various political, economic and military maneuvers to try and gain the upper hand. The Firkoning was at a disadvantage in this game though, as he preferred to assert his authority without causing an uprising. Eventually Admeth had enough. He convinced seven of the nine earls to join him and they severed their allegiance to the Firkoning, declaring themselves independent and decree they would govern themselves, just as the Valian republics did twenty years prior. Admeth told the people he had tried he had tired of policies that made the nobles rich while putting the people of the Derwood at risk. He declared himself a the duke, again modeled after the Valian Republic's governing structure, and called the Derwood a free palatinate. Thus began the War of Defiance in 2668 AI. The war lasted four years and caused countless casualties, including Admeth himself. The, the, the Rudans with their Glanfatan allies were able to persevere. Glanfatan astrologers, alongside the Derudan forces and members of the ad hoc knights of the Crucible Militia, won the Battle of Defiance Bay, which became the last battle of the war and left Derwood free from Adrian Imperial rule. Seven of the nine earls of the Derwood survived and, unified in purpose, signed treaties with the Firkoning of Adir. The war gave the Derwood a greater sense of unity between its citizens and their Glanfatan allies. Admeth Hardred was perverted by both groups, and the Derwood enjoyed for the first time a nationwide fellowship of independence, perseverance, and sacrifice. Yenwood and Quinsurn were dissolved and incorporated into the surrounding earldoms, leaving seven Hellsgate, the Grasp, Tenfords. Northridge, Coldwater, Ashfall, and Bay Bale Ridge. 
New Dunrit was named Defiance, renamed Defiance Bay and would become the seat of power for the new duke in Barrel Ridge. The new duke's rule began in 2672 AI. You saw nothing. Oh, I can just take your stuff, great. Behold, though faithful, the visage of thy transformation. Fear not the journey when the portal opens. Become one with the will, with glad heart and cheerful countenance, for the whole way shall open for all in their time. Neither the rich nor influential, neither kings nor rulers, neither the strong nor powerful can escape its embrace. Beroth will usher thee through the doorway, and thou wilt return to life, thy mortal life begun anew. There goes the cycle, there goes life. There thou goest also. Thou shalt approach the door, the inevitable shall approach thee. Do not turn back on the portal, do not turn back on new life. Walk the path and welcome change or face the night. For he walks the road with thee and will guide all to their destination. Thou mortal, the school thou wilt become. Thou closed off, the key thou shalt return. Thou sealed. The threshold thou shalt cross. I admire the amount of fluff they have in here. Over the five years following his ascension to Gref, Atmif attempted to mend relations with the Glanfatans and bring his land together with theirs. He enacted laws that restricted the taking of new slaves, allowed Glanfatans to buy their fellows out of bondage, and imposed a tax on slave ownership in order to promote the use of free labor. While there was some resistance to these new laws, the fair cunning attention to Red Ketseras and Adnes power, backed by the colonists, made it difficult for the Earls to truly resist what was happening. In 2662 AI, in the year of the 10th anniversary of the War of Black Trees, Atamif broke about the end of slavery in the Deerwood. He negotiated a series of treaties with the Clan Fatans, wherein a timeline was established for the official emancipation of all remaining slaves. Each owner would receive compensation in either land or money based on the number of slaves freed. If they didn't comply, the slaves would be seized and their former masters would suffer a substantial fine. In return for this, the Glenfadans opened trade routes with the Durwood and allowed the Rudans to live in and near areas that had their sacred ruins, but they are under no conditions to enter the ruins. As a final act of goodwill, Atme freed Galvan Regd, saying he had suffered sufficiently for his actions. The fair cunning, seeing he was completely out of control in his own palantinate, devised a plan to get the supply of ancient artifacts running again. He approached the earls suffering under Admet's rule and convinced them to hire agents to raid the ruins. Initially they did so in secret, but they quickly become sloppy, eventually being caught. This breach of the treaties incited Glanfatas again to act of violence while Admef researched who was behind it. With help of the Glenfatan leaders, Admef found evidence that pointed back to the Ferconin as the source of the raids. That was the beginning of the end for Adirian rule in the Deerwood. Over the next seven years, Admef and the Ferconin maneuvered around each other, playing political, economic and military games in order to gain the, the upper hand. In 2668 AI, Admef declared that they would have had enough. The Ferconing would no longer be recognized. The Deerwood was now a free entity and would govern itself. This started the War of Defiance, which lasted five years. The end result of the war was freedom for the Deerwood, and though the Khadret would never live to see it come to a close, the people of Deerwood considered him the founder of their country nevertheless. Thank you. Oh, some light ammo, that's better than mine. Give me that. Where is it? Thank you. I have some simple, I had some simple armor. Okay, we are finally ready to face 
Roderick. 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 The Lord of the Skip. No traps, no traps. Mm. Just in case. Ah, eh, never mind. I don't think we will be bothered here. I hope we. I I hope we won't be bothered here. Let her approach. Flanked by a host of guards, all of whom regard you with mute hostility, Lord Frederick VII observes you from his throne, clad in ornate plate. His eyes have a hollow quality, and there is a pallor to the man's gaunt face that leaves his features showing stark against his dark and unkempt, unkempt hair. There is a dagger discarded upon one stone arm of a throne, a thin crimson rivulet warms its way down from the blade and past Redrick's fingers, even as he leans forward to regard you with a piercing gaze. Thought he would be better looking, even with all the inbreeding. Though his face is calm, you notice Eder's hands straying toward his weapon, as though with a mind of its own. It seems I have you to thank for the chaos spreading through my keep. I half expected some invading army. It is unlike Kolch to hire mercenaries, or foreigners for that matter, and you are not one of mine, so I cannot accuse you of treason. His fingers close loosely around the pommel of the dagger, as if to ascertain it is still there, and then flinch away. Perhaps he ought to have considered such tactics sooner. You've made short work of my guards. His eyes narrow. They were good and loyal servants, loyal to my coin, if not to me. They deserved a better fate than you gave them. What has my cousin promised you? Some grand reward? If he had any resources to his name, he would not covet mine. And if he had any honor in him, he would not have tried this here, now, when I have lost so much. Kolsk is your cousin? Oh yes, we are kin, he and I. He was raised within these walls, in fact, privy to all the privileges our family had to offer. But a greedy man always hungers after more than he receives, however bountiful. I was eldest, heir to the stewardship of our lands, and he was not. The legacy brought chaos with it, panic and despair. Kolsk took advantage of that chaos, creating division in our ranks, luring loyal men and women to his cause. Good men, good women. Redrick's gaze goes distant for a moment, and then he glances at you and his lip curls. He fled the keep in time to hole up in the wild beyond the village, to play at being a commoner and court favor with the people. And while he plays at conqueror, the veil suffers. Families, traders, all. I do not have enough men to guard the roads and defend us from Kolsk incursions both. My attention suffers, and so my governance. My family. Patrick breathes out through his nose. Nor can I make the effort necessary to bring about an end to this curse if we are beset at all hours by his traitorous plots. What have you lost? Much. There is a plague among us here in Gilded Vale. The legacy is but part of it. The rest is fear, heresy, perversion. Each incident alone is but the flicker of a candle, but together, a blaze that will destroy us. I would like some perversion. The legacy makes a man mad. Perhaps it does worse to women. I do not know. His gaze flicks towards you, searching, then turns away. They cling to whole promises, to dark and terrible things. Each lie permitted fits the fire. Every whisper from preening charlatans and venom tongued midwives, the words of false prophets, the promises of dead gods. He clenches a gloved fist. The flame consumed her. My egret. 
and our child with it. What happened there? Pointing at the dagger. A just sentence. His voice wavers, and in that moment a pang of grief crosses his face. Ygritte knew. She hid the verses from me, the tokens. She knew what I would make of them. The scattered god poisoned her against me, made her deaf to my instruction. Only when our son was born, that whole thing, that monster, then, then we both knew what her crimes had wrought. Patrick turns a baleful look upon you, draw walking face flashed and splotchy with motion. It could not stand. He brings up a hand suddenly toward his temple, obscuring his face. What does Colts know of sacrifice? He would indulge himself, let us succumb one by one and suffer Baroth's punishment, until the final soul goes to its keeping, never to return, and gilded veil is but a barren land. You murdered your own wife, your child. I carried out the sentence. Would you have me give her to an executioner? In the deal we see at, to our own justice. Frederick sits back in his throne, his knuckles white upon the armrest. And that thing, that silent aberration, that wasn't a life to kill. His dark eyes narrow. Keep your recrimi recriminations, trespasser. I have done my duty. Gilded the Vale has suffered under your rule. It deserves a better leader. Frederick makes a low, huffing noise of disbelief. And you think Kolsk is that leader? What does he understand of what it means to be Dane? He has gathered a meager assembly to illiterate farmers and scavengers to himself, and sends this in suicidal action against my guards. You are a pawn in Kolsh's designs, and he has kept his motivations from you for a reason. I wonder if you understand what it is you do, or what you might accomplish if you were better informed. You have proven your competence in your way, and had I such an ally, we might together put an end to Gilded Vale's woes, Lift the curse once and for all, and in doing so, return us to a life where such strict measures are not necessary. I would like to know more about the Redricks. Redricks? It is but I alone now. But the Redrick name was perfect in glory. We have been stewards of Gilded Vale for generations. Its people look to us still for guidance and protection. First from the excesses of the Empire, and now from the, what dangerous the Deerwood holds. I have inherited that duty. By my vows, by my title, so long as I am Thane, I will permit no threat against our lands, be they mortal or spiritual in nature. What has happened to Gilded Vale? The legacy. Retric press. Shortly after the death of the scattered god, Wade Wen's legacy fell upon our lands. He shakes his head, and despair came with it. How could it not when the curse took our children, our hope, from us? I knew that Beroth would not allow such cruelties, not unless we had lost his favor. Some in the village cling yet to a full safe, worshipping the dead god. They revere him in secret, even knowing what it brings upon us. My own wife. She continued her heresies against my wishes. And when our child was born, we saw them that then that no sin remains unrevealed. His jaw works. No man is free from Bera's judgment. No woman. Redrick looks to the dark resting on the throne. I will do what I must to ensure that we do not stray again from the path, but it has taken time to root out the last of these cultists within our village. Time Kolsk used to gather his forces. Your people deserve justice. This madness you're mad. 
So be it. May the twin god take pity upon your splintered soul and scatter it to the winds. Don't worry, the fight just started and he's already there. Why are you here? Okay. Use this. on yourself yeah that's free of your keeping it again oh my goodness that was bad you too that not come on kill him okay okay you can take start hitting red rick Uh, I think you should, uh, should do that. God damn it. This demon is not really. Never mind. This demon just single handedly killed Redrick. Come on. All you need to do is survive. We did it! And as long as I don't die, they won't I die either. Just this. You need great sword to hand it. Oh, and, and a little grimoire. You'll take it. Oh, some capes, some light armor. Hmm. Is it better than yours? No. Good. Uh, one eleven. Okay, that's weird. Um, let's stash the rest. At once. Hmm? Okay. And with that, I'll end this part here. So, thank you very much. Stay, stay alive, and see you soon. Bye.